So let's explore templating a bit more because it doesn't have to be this super complex thing. But it is going to make a huge difference when it comes to creating content using AI in a more competitive way. Now, I can only show you how I use the templating feature, but it's up to you to think outside the box for the type of content that you're going to use to make the most of it. Because if you're used to doing one click blog posts where you give it the outline and tell AI to write the content, then you're not really going to see the value in templating. But if you generate your content in sections and you use the templating feature to glue everything together, then you're really going to find a lot of value in the things that you're able to do with reusable blocks and all the different Gutenberg block elements. For example, if I were doing a roundup post of some sort or a listicle of some sort where I already have the individual variables, so the company data, for example, let's say top 10 law firms in New York. If I had that data in a spreadsheet, in fact, I've made a video on this exact topic. So I'll put a clip in and a link to that video in the description. But what I could do is create exactly how I'd want that company profile to look. If I were doing a post of top 10 X in Y. So let's do top 10 lawyers in New York. And then we'd use the year short code. You could do in year or yeah, doesn't matter. So let's start building out what this template would look like. So we may have the introduction or you may want to write the introduction yourself, in which case you'd want to have your variables already set. So the name of the company, the location and all of those things. So you may want to write your own introduction and then just swap the variables out. I find this works really well because then it's less AI generated content. You've given a really personal introduction. You're able to control the quality of that introduction and then just swap out the variables and then proceed with the AI structured posts. We've searched and we've delivered. Here are the top. This is very short, but just to give you an example of the various ways that you can use variables. So the top, if you're doing all different types of businesses, so we just do here are the top business, if that's the name of the variable in location. And again, this assumes that you have these variables in your sheet already. It's not going to just fill these in. You need to have these variables set. And then you can also do things like bold it and whatever else you want to do with it. Or you can again, or you'd have the introduction variable here. You're either writing your own introduction and then using like micro variables to swap out the bits of data, or you're going to generate an entire introduction, in which case you can still do things like bold it and whatnot, because we're going to be going into code editor and then taking the code as it is. And as you can see, the variables and the curly brackets are still intact, which is what we need. So we'd be doing that. We've got our introduction and then you can use BR tags in the HTML or you can use spaces. I like spaces. They give it a nice range. And if you have ads, the ads have somewhere to go. Your text is looking clean. Everything's spaced out well. So I like to use spaces. And then you may have, again, providing you have the variable, you'd have business one. So we're going to do a H2, have business one. And the variables are case sensitive. So be wary of that. But we can just start to copy these. And oops, no, we don't want to do it like that. We want to duplicate. Or we can come over to the code editor. And we're going to, we won't do 10 because it's just a bit excessive. Is that five? So we would have our variables. So there's two, there's three. I probably didn't need to do, I probably could have done the, the, the template and then copied and pasted all of those, but it's fine. Okay. But yeah, I wouldn't recommend doing them individually like that. I'd say to get it exactly how you want it. So let's say this variable is company profile and I can't stress this enough. You do want to make sure you already have these variables and spacer and then the separator and and rinse and repeat. So what else might there be? There also might be a map 
And let's say you have a map. Do we have map by default? No, we don't. If you add the uh, Spectra, it's a free WordPress plugin. If you add Spectra, you can throw in a map. I'm, I'm going to do that now. Okay, so we now have Spectra added. And one of the things that I love about Spectra is you can add, if you want to add a Google map, you don't have to add your own um, API for Google Maps. It's, it uses its one, which is saves you a lot of time. So let's say you were doing, okay, business one, you've got the company profile, which will be AI generated based on the scraped data. So based on the Google Maps um, or Google review data, you'd have that all concatenated in a cell in your spreadsheet and then that variable would be used to feed the prompt to say write a unique company profile on this business so this would be a whole ai generated factual block of information about that company you would have of course told it to format it and bold phrases and separate things and you could also tell it within that prompt to include a link to the company website. So here's an example of a prompt data cell, um, a concatenate cell where you have all of the scraped data, including um, business images and logos, company website, review data, all of that you can scrape using Hexamatic or Outscraper, any of those tools. I've previously documented those on YouTube, but the real gem is these concatenate cells, these prompt data cells and you just want to concatenate them so you're structuring the data and you're linking all the cells together. Otherwise, you would just have jumbled up information and it wouldn't make much sense. So you've got the name of the business, is an, and then the type of business, so accountant, firm, or whatever it is, um, their speciality, and then this is obviously based on the data that you've scraped, and where they're based, their full address, their operating hours, their Google rating, their website, all the data that you have, which you would typically use for programmatic SEO, you wanna put them all in this prompt data cell, this concatenated cell. And then again, you can either use the Google Sheet, the Bolt Publishing AI Google Sheet, or you could upload your CSV with these prompt data cells, obviously in an array, because you want them all on the same line if you're doing like a top five, top seven, top 10 post. But you could upload your sheet with your structured prompt data cell and then get the prompt to generate this sort of information with it. So you'd be getting the same result and this would be your company profile. But what you can tell it to do is structure it in a better way. So you can tell it to write about the company. You can tell it how you want it to organize the opening hours. You can tell it how you want it to display the Google rating um, and also include a an external link um, rather than the actual URL to the company's website. So you just have a bit more flexibility. But this is essentially what you'd be doing in the Bulk Publishing AI WordPress plugin to achieve those top five, top seven, top 10 business posts. So again, how you talk to the information in your variables is everything. The templating and how you prompt the data that you give it is everything. And then these things just enrich your posts. So the template, and the reusable blocks and all of those things. Those are just there to enrich what you've already laid out. And these things, of course, they do take quite a lot of time to put together. But if you spend an hour or two hours on your template and you have, think about it, if you've done New York or you've done all these different kinds of location posts, you've done the top 500 popular destinations in the US or wherever it is that you're doing. Once you've done the template, you've done it one time because you've done it in such a way that the variables fill in everything. So the introduction is going to be tailored to that keyword, the business, the location, the titles, all of those things are going to be tailored to that keyword. So you won't have to worry about any uh, misinformation or wrong information based on your template. Your template is just generic 
And then the information in your sheet has to do the heavy lifting and the prompt just organizes that data for you in a unique way. What I will say is that you don't just want to throw the map in this because it needs information and it needs an address. So we've given it a dummy address so we can look for that placeholder information in the code editor. And then we're going to want to put our own variable in there for our template. Let's see. And this is going to work for any type of block like this. I use Affi AI frequently for my Amazon and my affiliate tables and blocks and I do the same thing. So I will either find the short code or the, the HTML and I'll find the placeholder. So in here would be our variable for the address. And, and this is what we'd want. So again, providing you have the address in a column in your sheet and the variable named correctly or however you want to name it, it doesn't need to be called address, but you have your variable and the information is correct. It's going to replace that information with this. And, uh, and then you've got that, that's fine. So this is not going to show anything because it's now got address in curly brackets as the address. And then again, you just want to find the different things that you can use to enrich it. You, you don't want to add anything excessive that you're not going to use or you, that you won't need. If you have an image that's going underneath each of these headings, or if you, you have a Google image. So do this in the sheet beforehand. I think I demonstrated this in the other video where you can do the same thing. You've got the image or it would be business image one or business one image, whatever you've got, you'd want to prepare that ahead of time in the sheet. So business one image, company profile, then you've got the map and then you've got your spacer and your separator. As I said, I didn't need to do this because I would want to just copy and paste these, this because I've already done the full template now. We'd have that. However many times, and then of course you're going to want to make sure you've done everything that needs to be changed. So I do need to um, correct myself because address would then be address one. And so on. So address one, business one, business two, business two image, company profile two, or whatever it is, you you need to figure that out based on your variables, but everything is going to link up to that information. So again, I could sit here all day creating a very intricate template that I'm probably not going to use, but I want to open your mind up to the possibilities of the combination of using Gutenberg to plan exactly how it would look visually and then going into code editor, taking that code and then using that as your template. If you've done it like this and you've got your 10 businesses or five businesses, you might want to just use the first draft then as FAQs or some sort of tips for choosing the right lawyer or something like that in which case you would just put your first draft here and and then you would rewrite the prompt so we'll save that and then you would rewrite the prompt to say write a listicle of five tips for choosing a lawyer or whatever it is that you're doing faqs you'd use the first draft to do that or you'd use the first draft to now add your internal links if you've not done them within the different sections that is just again to get you thinking about how you can use the templating feature and really you can start to enrich your posts in a limitless way because you can make your own reusable blocks and group them and new block and the same thing you do with that you'd go into code editor and you get this is your html this is how you use your reusable blocks in your templates and i've done this with images with links in them and affiliate content and all kinds of stuff. Whatever you do, turn it into a reusable block, grab the HTML, you can use it in your templates, you can enrich your posts. So when you generate them, they are already formatted and good to go.